The legendary Toyota Land Cruiser 70 Series has clocked up 70 years of service. So to celebrate, Toyota Australia has given us a trio of 70th anniversary edition models, including this one. It adds a little bit more tinsel, it has a lot of carryover elements, and not surprisingly, it asks a bit extra for the privilege. Let's take a closer look. The Toyota Land Cruiser story is etched in Australian automotive folklore, making its name as the vehicle of choice on the snowy hydro scheme back in the 1950s before going on to win droves of Aussie buyers. Since the original FJ25, the Land Cruiser has enjoyed seven decades of success in Australia, with the last major overhaul occurring in 2007 followed by further updates for single cab variants in 2016. The Land Cruiser 70 Series is set to undergo its next evolutionary tweak in 2022. Here we have the new 70th anniversary model to commemorate the occasion. There are 600 examples available in total spread across wagon, single cab and double cab variants. Each marks a circa $7,000 pricing premium on the Land Cruiser GXL models on which they're based. Sitting at the midpoint of the 70th anniversary edition lineup is the 79 series single cab chassis tested here, which is priced at a cool $80,050 plus on road costs. Now visually it's differentiated from the donor model with this heritage grill and Toyota lettering, the LED daytime running lights and fog lights, the black front bumper and the black wheel arches. 16 inch darkened alloy wheels and heritage Land Cruiser badging help spruce up other parts of the outside styling. Our test vehicle is also fit with a $4,443 steel tray, ballooning its price tag close to $85,000 before on-road costs. Mechanically, the 70th anniversary edition is identical to the donor vehicle. That means a four and a half litre turbo diesel V8 engine that's matched standard to a five speed manual transmission. Now in terms of outputs, you get 151 kilowatts and 430 newton metres. But anyone that's familiar with the Land Cruiser V8 will know that you can kind of treat those figures as starting points because you can go pretty berserk with modifications. The Land Cruiser 70 Series features lockable front and rear differentials configured via old school hub locks, low range gearing, a raised air intake and a 130 litre fuel capacity, which should theoretically give you a 1000 kilometre plus driving range when the official fuel claim is taken into account. Inside the 70th anniversary edition is treated to a number of premium options that Toyota says hasn't previously been fit to a 70 series. I use the word premium very loosely because we're talking about very basic things like black upholstery, uh, black leather accented trim on the steering wheel and gear shifter, some wood grain trim and some black accenting dotted throughout the cabin. The interior offers open cubbies and storage, but not a lot more, while there's enough space behind the seats to squeeze a soft overnight bag or other small items. Although the space is decidedly old school, it feels well put together and has a nice charm about it. The technology side of things is where the 70th anniversary edition really feels outdated in my opinion. Yes, you get a couple of extra USB ports, but take a look around the cabin. There's no digital speedo, no steering wheel mount and buttons, no Apple CarPlay, no Android Auto, and the infotainment system easily feels about 10 years behind the times. The system does include Bluetooth and a CD player, and let's not forget the powered antenna. Although the single cab version of the Land Cruiser scores a five star safety rating from 2016, the truth is it is sorely lacking in safety features, missing all eight of our key requisites. At the business end, the Land Cruiser 70 series features a three and a half tonne brake towing capacity and a 1225 kilogram payload. Crucially though, with our 357 kilograms steel tray fitted, that figure drops to 868 kilos.
With so many old school elements at play, you could easily interpret the 79 series as being noisy and agricultural. Don't get me wrong, it is definitely both those things. And it is also a vehicle that requires a lot of driver input to make it go, turn or stop. Especially turning, a 14.4 metre turning circle means you're quite busy on the wheel through tighter scenarios and on the open road through corners alike. With all of that said though, the 79 series is a vehicle that almost invites you to get in, crack the window, listen to that beautiful induction noise through the snorkel and let time slow you down. It's a vehicle like a few others currently available on the market and while it's not everyone's cup of tea, Toyota has certainly found a niche with the 79 series audience and I've got to be honest, I can kind of see why. Despite its capacity and forced induction, the V8 diesel is far from explosive. And with the gearing of its five-speed manual transmission taken into account, it has a relatively narrow bandwidth at which it performs at an optimal level. Again, there's little wonder that owners are fitting a laundry list worth of modifications. The engine sounds great, even in stock trim, and performed well with 500 kilograms on board. This time round, we didn't get a chance to tow with the 70 series. Now even with its ladder frame chassis, coil sprung live front axle and leaf spring rear, the 79 series is actually quite compliant for a single cab ute. In fact, it's a lot easier to live with, with than compared to most single cab utes. I think a lot of that is owed to the weight of this vehicle, 2200 kilogram curb weight before you go and stick a big heavy tray on the back. And it means that the 79 series plods along faithfully. It feels pretty compliant on the road over bumps. It feels stable and sure-footed as well. Even something as simple as the brakes, you know, four-wheel disc brakes at each corner mean that it feels stable, it feels reliable as well, under tow and under load. In its desired setting, the Land Cruiser 79 series ute makes a bit more sense. With manual gearing well suited to farming applications, a 235mm ground clearance and a water weighting depth of 700mm. Based on previous experience, the Land Cruiser can crawl its way to far-flung places. And while some take issue with the front wheel track being wider than the rear, we've never really found it to be a deal breaker off-road. Less convincing is the 79 series servicing schedule, with short 6-month, 10,000km intervals and expensive servicing costs. Then there's the problem of actually getting your hands on one with limited new stock and sky high used prices. So we've established that the 79 series is expensive, it's old hat, it lacks the most basic safety and technology and well it's hardly earth shattering on the road. But I think we're forgetting the most important facet of Toyota's workhorse, that of durability. Don't take my word for it though, I've brought a prop along to prove it. Comparing the two, there are clearly some elements that have changed since 1991, not least the upgrade from six cylinder to V8 power. But other things have remained remarkably similar, including the doors, climate control interfaces and cabin layout. When you take a step back, the soft evolution of the Land Cruiser 70 series has really helped make it such a cult car. So while the latest version is expensive, lacking key equipment, and pretty agricultural, it really does deliver a driving and ownership experience that few other vehicles can match. I think that the 70th anniversary edition is actually a pretty fitting way to celebrate 70 years. <laughs>